Hello, this is Odette Hadas from Trace Plan Communications. And in this video, I will talk about the pod efficiency and throughput. So what's this video about? Pond technologies are often advertised according to their related line rates. As an example, GPON is 2.5 gig downstream, 1.25 upstream. XGS PON is 10 gigabit per second symmetrical, both upstream and downstream. So people often ask the question, are these numbers the throughput rates that you should expect to see? In other words, for example, do I expect to be able to deliver 10 gigabit per second throughput on XGS PON? If not, what are the actual rates and why? So let's talk about a few terms before we go into the details. The first term is nominal line rate, which means the total number of bits that can be physically transferred per unit of time over a communication link. It accounts for the useful data as well as for the overheads. So it necessarily exceeds the effective data rate because of these overheads. The SVU is the service data unit and throughput rate represents the total number of bits of the SDUs that can be physically transferred per unit of time over a communication line link. In other words, this is the actual, uh, these are the actual bits that you want to transfer. And this is the, the measurement that you are looking at. This is what you would like to achieve. And let's take the analog analogy of a freight train, which will help us understand this better. So if we have a freight train, the nominal line rate is more or less the equivalent of the train speed, how many miles per hour or kilometer per hour. SDUs are the packages that the train carries. And the throughput rate is an indication that gives us an idea about the volume of packages that it can carry, how long it takes to carry them over a given distance. In other words, the speed of transferring or the rate of transferring the actual packets or packages. And now let's go to some pawn efficiency definitions. So pawn efficiency refers to the ratio between the maximal achievable throughput rate and the nominal line rate. And let's use XGS pawn as an example to explore this subject. So XGS PON, as various other PON technologies, have various different protocol layers. And we're talking about what is called the transmission convergence layer, which is a protocol layer which is positioned between the physical media dependent layer and the actual clients. And as this diagram shows here, above the physical media dependent layer, there is the phi adaptation layer and then the framing sublayer and then the service adaptation layer. And each of these layers adds some overhead, either at the beginning or both at the beginning and the end. So the total net throughput of every layer is the previous layer minus the overhead. And if we take the train analogy again, it's like you have these items that needs to be that need to be transferred. Each item is packaged in its own box. Multiple boxes are packaged in a larger box. And these boxes are loaded onto the train cars. And these, this packaging takes some space and it is the equivalent more or less of the overheads of the different layers in XGS bond. Now, before we go into the, the calculations and the numbers, let's look at the difference between downstream and upstream, because unlike a train, which goes exactly the same way in both directions, there are some differences between the way the downstream and the upstream behaves in part. So the first, is, the first difference is that downstream is transmitted constantly, whereas the upstream is transmitted in bursts. There are some different fields in the overhead blocks. The downstream requires the BW maps. Uh, they are the time slots. They indicate the time slots for allocation 
or the allocation of time slots for upstream transmission. Uh, on the other hand, the upstream has the preamble and delimiter, which indicate the start of the burst and allow the transmitter on the other side to synchronize on the upstream. There's an additional overhead called the guard time, which is only relevant for the upstream. I would present, I would explain what it is in a few minutes. Uh, there are additional messages, and this is specific to XGS bond, but the standard allows up to 256 flow messages. These are the control messages of the basic processes on PON. And the standard allows up to 256 to be carried in a downstream frame compared to one in the upstream frame. This is not very typically used, but if it is used, if more than one is used, uh, it takes some additional overhead. And then there is a mechanism called forward error correction, which is mandatory in the downstream and XGS bond, but optional in the upstream. And again, this adds some overhead. Guard time. Before we go ahead, let me explain what guard time is. Yeah, the pointer. So as you may know, as I already mentioned, the upstream in pawn is bursty, meaning uh, it is not transmitted all the time. Different ONUs transmit at different time. And every time an ONU turns uh, its laser on and turns it off, uh, the, the next ONU in line should wait some time to uh, reduce interference and to prevent overlapping. And this time that it needs to wait is the guard time. So even if your time slots are allocated um, in a very efficient way, there will be some delay because of this guard time. And this is an unused resource of the network. Okay, now let's say, let's give you some benchmarking numbers. So let's look at each of the layers individually. First of all, the phi frame and the FS frame. These are two different layers. Um, actually, the lowest layer and the layer above. And if you look at the downstream and make the calculations of, between the number or in the ratio of the number of bytes of the two layers, you'll find that there's an overhead of about 12.92%. And this accounts for forward error correction and scrambling. And this is the most significant overhead and it's a fixed percentage, nothing you can do about it. Even if you are using your XGS pawn uh, very, very efficiently, you'll always have this overhead. The FS frame in the downstream has additional overhead and this overhead can vary between a very small number up to 21, a little bit more than 21%, depending on some factors, mainly the number of the BW, of the PLOM messages in the downstream and the number of the BW map allocations. And in the upstream phi, the overhead can be, again, a very, very small number, um, up to about 6%, because of some overheads. And again, depending on various parameters. Then comes the XGEM layer. This is actually the service adaptation layer. Uh, this layer is identical for the downstream and the upstream. And this, has, this layer has an overhead as low as 0.05% and as high as 100%. And what is 100%? If you're just using the, your pawn and transmitted, transmitting idle frames, all you'll have are the overheads. So 100% of your, of your capacity will go for the overhead, overheads. Of course, this is not a realistic case, but this is the theoretical maximum. And if we take all these numbers together and try to come up with some benchmarks, so we find that the minimal overhead that is contributed by all the layers is about 13%, out of which the big part is the phi adaptation layer and some contributed by the XGEM layer and a little bit even less by the FS frame. And this means that if the nominal line rate of XGS bond is 9.95328, 
it's not exactly 10, it's a little bit less. This is the right number. The theoretical maximum throughput that can be achieved in XGS PON is about 8.66 gigabit per second in each direction. In real uh, life scenarios, it will be a little bit less because uh, this is a theoretical maximum. For example, assuming that there's one ONU, uh, no guard time, um, not uh, or very little number of BWM app allocations and so on. So realistically, it can be close to this number, but it would be a little bit less. Now, there are also a number of trade-offs and optimizations that affect the throughput in real-life scenarios. And these trade-offs can help you optimize the throughput. So let's look at a few of them. The first is forward error correction, FEC, which we already mentioned. FEC adds overhead to the frame, but on the other hand, it improves the noise immunity. So you pay for better noise immunity by taking away some of the throughput with this overhead. BW map allocations, again, something we mentioned, these are the allocations for the own use to transmit in the upstream. They can contribute significant overhead to the downstream frame. But on the other hand, if you have more BW maps, you allow more own use to transmit with smaller delay between transmissions. So you're utilizing your upstream in a more efficient way. Oh, you can see this is, okay, you're paying some penalty in the downstream, to make better use of your upstream. Status monitoring DBA. This is a mechanism that allows the OLT to assess how much each of the ONUs, uh, how much bandwidth each of the ONUs requires and utilize the types of allocations accordingly. Uh, again, it adds some overhead to the upstream, but you pay with this overhead to get better utilization of the bandwidth according to the actual request of the ONUs. And the last but not least, the SDU size, which is the size of the packets to be transmitted. So let's talk about this last four point a little bit more. And going back to the train analogy, if you have smaller packages, it means you're consuming more space by the packaging. Remember we showed the packages which are which each has its own box and then these boxes go into larger boxes and so on. So if you pay, if you have more boxing or more packaging, you're paying by, uh, you take, this take away some space. On the other hand, if you have smaller packages, it means you can make use of some available space. So if you have, if you could take this package and split it into two smaller packages, uh, then rather than having to wait for the next train or putting it in the next car, you could put this whole package into spaces that are available anyway. So fragmentation is a mechanism that allows a large packet to be split and fill these gaps, and that's what it's intended for. And if we go back to the world of XGSPON, if you take an SDU, which is the package, you can, uh, fragmentation is a mechanism that allows you to divide it into smaller fragments, each of which will be transmitted in a separate XGEM header, XGEM frame, sorry. The XGEM frame has its header. So on the one hand, fragmentation means more overhead because there are more XGEM headers. On the other hand, it allows better utilization of a frame. And the overhead, in this case, depends on the STU size, the size of the package to be transmitted. Because the XGEM header size is fixed, so the larger the packets, the smaller the overhead. As an example, um, not an example, the eight, the XGEM header is eight bytes. So if, for example, the packet is 64 bytes, the header is eight out of 64, which is 12.5%. 12 12 on, on the other hand, if the packet is 1500 bytes, it will only be a little bit more than half a percent. Okay, so uh, that's all for today. If you want to learn more about this subject, we have a specific webinar uh, which goes into more details. You can find the list of our webinars on our website. You have the link here. I also included it in the description of this video. You're welcome to visit Tracepan and learn more about our company or contact us at info at tracepan.com. 
If you like this video, give us a like. And if, if you'd like to see more videos, you're welcome to subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching. I'm Odette Hadas, and see you in the next video.